If you ever make up your mind to visit the Patalpani Falls, the pristine and gorgeous falls, 100 kilometers away from Khandwa in Madhya Pradesh, you'll have to take a train from Khandwa on the Patalpani Kalakun route. And as you board the train and the train moves forward, don't be surprised if it suddenly comes to an unscheduled halt. The driver moves out of the train and starts to pray at a small temple and then he gets back and the journey moves on. Why, you would ask, would the train driver do this? Well, he would tell you and in fact even the people of that region would tell you that if a train driver does not perform this ritual of praying, then the train is unlikely to move forward because Tantia Mama is not going to allow the train to go forward. But why? And who is Tantia Mama anyway? Well, he is exactly the subject of our video today. Tantia Mama, the lad who went from being the beloved of the village to the betrayer of the village to the Badmash of Khandwa. What is his story and why do the Bheel community hero worship him? Why was he a big scare to the British? What makes him a noted freedom fighter from the tribal community? This is what we are going to explore in this final episode of the Great Tribal Warriors of Bharat monthly series. Get ready. Tandia was born in the year 1842 to a humble farming couple that lived in the Badada village of the Pandhana Tehsil that comes under the present day Khandwa district of Madhya Pradesh. And he had very humble expectations from himself and his life. He just saw himself continuing the family tradition. The little boy would accompany his father to the farms and when his father died in 1874 by when Tandia was 32 years old, all that he expected was that he too would just continue what his father was doing. But unfortunately, the Zamindars who held the land decided not to honor the pledge and in fact, they went on to implicate him in a series of crimes which Tandia had nothing to do with. Between the coming ins and going outs between the jail and the village, Tandia managed to fall in love with the daughter of one of the Zabindars. Oh, this was just blasphemous. The Zabindars were outraged and Tandia was disgusted with the way his life was turning out. And so he decided to shift from Pokhar to Siora, which was on the outskirts of Indore. He thought now he was going to be out of sight of the Zamindar, so life would be peaceful. Unfortunately for him, the Zamindar struck him down even there and ensured that the police of Indore were always putting him behind the bars on some pretext or the other. Unable to find any peace, Tantia decided that the only place he could live was the forest. But what was he going to do about his everyday dealings? I mean, he needed food and basic clothing, right? So he had no option but to resort to robbery, thieving, and gradually it took the shape of decoity. He was under the impression that now that he had become a decoit, people would despise him, the villagers that is. But to his surprise, he found a lot of sympathy because the villagers themselves were sick and tired of the misdeeds of the Zamindars and the police. And in Tantia, they saw a soul that was willing to stand up against all this. So from around 1875-76 to 1889, Tantia's life was all about playing the game of catch me if you can with the police and the administration because he had now grown from a one-man army to an army of many men that was looting and robbing zamindars and the government-run business establishments right under their noses. And of course, they did not keep all that loot to themselves. They kept a part of it and distributed the rest of it amongst the poor and the needy. And because of this, the villagers, the oppressed villagers, not only protect him from the police, but also looked upon him as a messiah. By 1887, Tantia had committed over 500 decoities and counting. And so there was tremendous pressure over the 
agent to the Governor General of the Central Provinces. At the time, Madhya Pradesh was known as Central Provinces. So, uh, Sir Leopold Griffin was the agent at that time, and there was tremendous pressure over him to bring an end to all these complications. So, in consultation and agreement with the Rizaldar Major Ishri Prasad of the British Indian Army, they got onto a plan to nab Tandia. The Indian side of the story is that Tandia having aged and now falling ill quite frequently was considering to surrender himself and so he was already in touch with Ganpat Singh, a Rajput who was a supplier to the British Army uh, who was also in contact with uh, the uh, Rizaldar Major Ishri Prasad to nab Tandia and as it turned out, the sequence of events that turned out was something like this. On the day of Raksha Bandhan, Tandia arrived at Ganpat's house because he regarded Ganpat's sister to be his own. And when they were going through the motions of the ceremony, Ganpat quietly took away Tandia's musket, thus making it very easy for the Rizaldar Major's men to arrest him. The police were quite jubilant over this arrest but at the same time they were also very apprehensive because their past experiences with arresting Tantia was that he would just vanish. So lest he pull another how did he act, he was taken in a heavily guarded, heavily armed vehicle to the Jabalpur jail and uh, after his short stay it followed a highly one-sided trial in which he was accused of a lot of things and even his one-time fiancé refused to say anything positive about him. Tantia was given the option to defend himself but he just chose not to say anything at all. He just had one request. He knew he was going to be awarded the death penalty uh, under the Indian Penal Code. He knew he was going to die anyway. His only request was that he be allowed to die like a soldier and so be shot instead of being sent to the gallows and hung like a common criminal. But the superintendent of police did not allow for it. The judge also did not allow for it and so he was hanged until death. What is quite notable about this trial of Tandia Bheel is that after the verdict came out, a group of lawyers actually petitioned that the verdict should be reversed. They said that since he was already on the verge of death, why send him to the gallows? Instead, the government should make use of his banditry skills to deal with the decoits of Burma. It would be of great service to the nation but that petition was shot down. The petition was rejected and Tandia was hanged on 4th of December 1889. Once the doctor had certified his death, the British took the body, the mortal remains and just dumped him along the route of the Patalpani Kalakund route. And thereafter people started noticing that if anybody passed through that way and did not show reverence to a particular spot something bad would happen to them if they were traveling the car would break down if they were traveling by train the train would break down but if they took a moment to show gratitude and respect then everything went fine and so slowly and steadily first wooden dolls started coming up a makeshift temple appeared and now there's a full-fledged temple and people actually do pray so next time you are on your way to patal pani and you are definitely going to go through this path take a moment to say thank you for all the bravery and courageousness that this simple villager displayed so now does that make tantia bheel a bad person well he was a decoyed how could he be good but that's actually not true there are numerous accounts of his kindness once when he was walking out on a evening walk he ran into a wedding procession and he requested to be taken to the bride and groom and not only did he bless them he gave them enough money so that they could have 
a great start to their married life. On another occasion, he ran into some kids who were joyfully playing around and he called them near to him and just gave them money so that they could just go and buy some sweets and candies for themselves. Also, he was a decoy with a lot of ethics. He never harmed women unnecessarily. In fact, on one occasion when he went to loot a Zamindar's house, the Zamindar himself wasn't there and his frightened wife offered all her ornaments to him, but Tantia refused to take it. So Tantia might have been a terror to the British, the police, the Zamindars, the administration, but to his own people, the ones who trusted him. He was the beloved uncle. Thank you so much for joining me in this monthly series that has run the year long. I hope you found it quite useful. I look forward to hearing from you on this and see you again in another exciting series. Till then, thank you and we'll get back to Galpataru.